What's up, Navigation Nation? It is Friday, April 20th. Welcome to this week's video update. Before we jump into the alerts, just wanted to make you aware of a couple updates we've made to the members area here. One of which is just on the alerts tab here. We archived some of the older alerts. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, uh, this was getting pretty long uh, as far as the number of alerts. So we archived those uh, starting at the end of 2017 and prior, we archived those. So if you're looking for alerts prior to the 1st of 2018, just click on that previous alerts button. It'll pop up and it's got them in, in uh, order of, of timing, starting with the most recent, going all the way back to when we very first started. So all that's still there. Just wanna make sure you're aware in case you're looking for some old alerts for some reason. Uh, it was just getting too long, and so we wanted to kind of archive archive those, and we'll continue to do update that as we continue to post more alerts. And then the second update I wanted to show you, and this is a request that we've uh, received from members over the last few months, and I think it's a great suggestion. Uh, what we've done here now for uh, some of these trades, so if first off, if we just post an opening trade, and there's been no adjustments or anything like that, exactly what you see here is the trade that we're currently in. However, once we start making adjustments, so the first one, for example, here is the, the notes short strangle, we made another adjustment. So what we're gonna start doing is posting an image of exactly where we're at in the trade. So I know it looks pretty small, but if you just click on it, that will pop up a bigger version so you can see that these are the exact strikes that we're in, uh, the number of contracts, all that good stuff. So we just take a, a quick screenshot from TOSS and it'll give you that information. I get a lot of questions about, uh, you know, it, it, it's great that you post, you know, the different trades. However, if we could have just kind of a snapshot of where exactly we're in the trade, where we are in the trade at, uh, at, at you know, in the immediate uh, time frame, that's gonna be helpful. So hopefully you guys like that. It is another step. Uh, that we have to do to produce. So uh, if you do like it, don't like it, let us know. Hopefully that's helpful. You can go through and see any trade that has had any type of adjustment. You're gonna see that. For example, here's one in Apple. Uh, obviously FXI, you can see we've had a lot of adjustments. So you click on this, you'll see exactly the different positions that we have right now. We've got a strangle on in May at the 49.50 strikes. And then we've got a strangle on in June at the 43.50. Uh, the May is with four contracts, the June is with five. So we will always update that anytime we make an adjustment that will be up to date. So I hope that is helpful. Uh, all right, let's jump into the alerts. Quite a few alerts this week. Uh, awesome opportunity. Just I love when there's some two-sided action. Had some up movement in the market in the first part of the week then some down movement the last part of the week. So uh, always makes our type of trading a lot more fun when we get that two-sided action. First trade, we started out of the gate on Monday with a, a pre-earnings long call in Microsoft. And so we like to put these on as we teach in the course leading up to the earnings announcement because a lot of times in some of these tech stocks, you get some upside momentum as well as you get the expansion in implied volatility to help offset some of that theta decay. So we did that in Microsoft. If we take a look at the chart, uh, we got in here, this is 416, and the very next day, Microsoft shot up, and we got out for a nice profit. And the amount of profit we got on that, let me just skip ahead here real quick, was, yeah, we booked a profit of over 65% just in that one day. So awesome trade there. And I'll get into here in a later alert, we actually jumped back into Microsoft because we still had some time before earnings. Uh, so I'll go over that here in a minute. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in DIA. So we had an iron condor on in DIA. We closed that out, booked a profit of over 40% of max profit. Uh, and then we're still holding our two sets of short call verticals. Uh, I'm gonna go to DIA on the platform here in a minute because we have another alert for, for DIA coming up here. Uh, next trade was a closing trade in XLU. So we bought back our short strangle in XLU, booked a profit over 45% of max profit. 
So early in the week when we had some upside movement in, in the market, we saw uh, implied volatility really contract, so we were able to book some winners. Uh, premium kind of got sucked out of a lot of things very nicely, so that was good. Uh, here's the Mar uh, Microsoft closing trade. Next trade was a closing trade in XRT. So we had an adjusting adjusted strangle, which in this case was a straddle. So we closed that remaining piece. Uh, we're able to book a profit on that on that trade. If we go to our closed trades real quick, just to take a look, uh, that was a that was one that we made a bunch of different adjustments on. So we started all the way back in November 21st of 17. Uh, and I actually did a video on this trade from beginning to end. So you can check out our YouTube channel or it'll be posted on our blog. I, can't, I don't know if it, it's already posted or not, but it will be. But, you know, this, this trade went entirely against us uh, from the very beginning. We, we put this on back in November of 17. So we, we needed to make some adjustments along the way, closed that out on 417, ended up booking a profit of 307. So you might think, wow, big deal, right? You, you're in the trade for four months and you only made a profit of 300 bucks. But the key thing to remember is this trade went way against us from the very beginning. So if we would have just closed it out, we may have taken, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but we, we would have taken a, tra a loss of, you know, somewhere between six and $800 or something like that. So turning a loser like that into a winner is a huge, huge deal. And once you kind of understand that and kind of grasp that concept of, of course, a lot of these trades are high probability, so we're just going to put them on and take them off and book a winner. And those are the easy ones. But if you can really learn how to adjust and roll and be mechanical in your adjustments like we teach and, and learn how to turn those losing trades into winners, that's when you become a more consistent and a more profitable trader. So check out that video if you haven't already. Uh, next trade was in EWZ. So we, uh, uh, this was a, oh, we're still on the close trade, sorry. Let's go over to the alerts, back to the alerts. Uh, so next, so that was the DIA, XLU, Microsoft, XRT. Okay, so EWZ. So we did a closing trade in EWZ, booked a profit, almost 50% of max profit, only in the trade for 14 days. So a nice quick winner. Like I said, we had that uh, IV contraction at the early part of the week, gave us an opportunity to book that winner. IV dropped down, IV percentile dropped down to 25 at that time. So nice, nice trade in EWZ. If we take a look at the charts, let's take a look at EWZ and I'll show you the uh, contraction in implied volatility. If we can get it to come up, EWZ. Uh, so you can see here, you know, we put this on obviously when, when implied volatility was, was higher, we've had this just slide down in, in contraction price stayed in a decent range. We were able to book a nice winner in a very short period of time. And that's the power of that putting trades on in, in high implied volatility, waiting for them to contract. Uh, next trade was an opening trade in NVIDIA. So this was a pre earnings long strangle. So I did get a question because we don't specifically get into long strangles in the earnings course. We just talk about pre-earnings long straddle. But this was basically the same thing. The, the strikes were so tight, so close to the money that uh, we just got a little bit wider. And the reason we did that is one, it, it reduces the amount of capital required to put the trade on and just gives, uh, it's a little bit wider, but still, you know, if we get the expansion in IV and, and a decent move in NVIDIA, uh, we'll, look to, we'll look to book a winner here. If we take a look at that trade right now, uh, NVIDIA is pretty flat today after uh, a, a pretty significant down move yesterday. So if we look at our trade, you can see we're up about 100 bucks, about 90, 95 bucks. Um, and that's purely due to just a slight move in price, but mostly due to the increase in implied volatility uh, from yesterday's, yesterday's down move. So we have until May 10th, on this one, uh, so we will we'll be out of the trade before May 10th, uh, but we'll continue to watch and monitor that leading up to that earnings announcement. Next trade was another pre-earnings long straddle. This one in Starbucks. So we took a look at Starbucks and and where it was from pricing standpoint and implied volatility, 
and we've seen a down move, a nice little down move today on Friday as well, helping out this position. So if we look at the Analyze tab here, you can see, put it on when price was right around 60. We've had a nice move down, up about 100 bucks on this trade. Uh, took about you know, $941 in capital to put this trade on. So I like to see about a 20% profit. So if we get a little bit more down move, maybe another pop in IV, uh, hopefully look to, to book this winner early next week. Starbucks announces earnings on 426. So we've only got six days including the weekend. So we'll be out of this early next week, regardless of where it goes. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in DIA. So we added another uh, iron condor in DIA in the June cycle. IV percentile popped up to 84 at that time. And so, and then we have the short call verticals still on as well. So if we take a look at DIA, we've got three different positions on. One is the iron condor that I just mentioned. Tiny bit of profit, not enough to take off yet, and that's in June. And then in May, we have these two short call verticals, which with the price move up in DIA, it's, it's popped out of our range in both cases. So we're just holding these for some additional short delta. We will be looking to roll these, uh, you know, unless price makes a major move down. We'll continue to roll these to keep that short delta in our portfolio, which by the way, we'll go to our monitor tab here at the end to show you where our portfolio is from a, from a Delta uh, standpoint. So stay tuned for that. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in ZN. So we added a, another strangle in the notes. Uh, price started to come down. In fact, let's just go to the Analyze tab and I'll show you in ZN. So this is the one that we just put on. So this is the new, new strangle. We put this on for a couple of reasons. One, we got a little bit of a pop-up in implied volatility if we look at TLT. So it had been kind of down here and then we got this nice pop-up in IV. So uh, gave us an opportunity to, to sell those options for a little bit higher price. I did get a question from one of our members saying, because at the time I think implied volatility percentile was in the mid 40s. Uh, so not quite above that 50 level. But you know when we do when we put on new trades, we typically like to do that when implied volatility is over 50 or the IV rank or IV percentile is over 50. But when we're making adjustments, we like to collect more credit, extend that duration. So we we will we will do that when implied volatility is under 50. Obviously, we, we like it more when it's above. But we'll, on an adjustment, we will uh, go ahead and, and add a, a, a piece to that trade. Um, outside of that that normal um, criteria. And then let me reset this real quick so I can uncheck those boxes. And so then here's our other piece of the trade. And you can see as prices move down in the notes, you know, this has breached our short strike. But what I wanted to do is I added that additional strangle to collect more credit centered around price. So I'm giving this a little bit more time. If it, if it stays here or, or continues lower into into early next week, if we look at just the value of the call, see there's not much left in those. So we will go ahead and roll those calls down. I just wanted to give it a few more days to see if uh, if price was gonna bounce back. Um, you, know, you can see we've had a little bit of a slide the last week or so. Uh, so seeing if, if it if it pops pops back up, but we'll, we'll be managing that early into next week. Next trade was a closing trade in IYR. So we closed out a short strangle in IYR, booked a profit of over 35% of max profit in just seven days. So nice contraction in IV there, sucked the premium out, gave us the opportunity to book that quick winner. And then next trade was we opened a new trade, uh, a new short strangle in EEM. And so if we take a look at EEM, we're still in this trade, <clears throat> still very centered. And uh, so nothing to do here except for wait for some more time to pass. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in ES. So we added an iron condor in the June cycle there, continuing to add, add credits and, and manage that position. So if we go to ES, uh, this is the iron condor that we added, still very centered, nothing to do here at this point. And then remember, we also have this long put vertical, which is a totally separate trade. Uh, but this is on just really as a, a short, just to add short delta in our portfolio. We've had this on and continue to roll it for several cycles and will most likely continue to do so. So just looking for some downside to benefit that piece. 
Next trade was an opening trade in Microsoft. So I mentioned we 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 put on and took off that pre-earnings long call, booked a nice profit over 65% in just one day. And then Microsoft yesterday came down in price a little bit and implied volatility still hadn't expanded too much. So we, we added another long call on this day here. And uh, obviously we now today on Friday, we've seen some more down movement. So if you haven't gotten into this, uh, and it's still, you know, relatively around this area. You, you could still enter potentially on Monday, depending on where price goes. Uh, but so we're looking for a pop higher into earnings. Uh, Microsoft earnings is on 426. So uh, I think that's Wednesday of next week, maybe. Could be off a little bit there. But anyway, we'll be out of the trade before then. If we take a look at where we're at here, so we're down about 80, 85, 86 bucks on the trade. So just looking for some momentum higher, some expansion in implied volatility would also help that position, which we typically get leading up to earnings. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ES. So we, we closed our May iron condor, booked a profit over 45% of max, max profit in just 15 days on that piece. And then as, as previously discussed, we, uh, we have that June iron condor that we put on earlier in the day. Next trade was the opening adjusting trade in ZS. So we added another iron condor in soybeans in the July cycle. Now in this one, we, we opted to enter in July, which has 63 days to expiration instead of June with 35. Part of the reason was there was some overlap in strikes if I was trying to, to enter in June. So I just opted to go out to July. Typically, we like to stay in that 30 to 60 days, but three days difference, you know, three, three days outside that 60 days isn't a big deal. And then we also widen the wings to 20 points instead of 10. I just like the risk reward a little bit better. Uh, if we take a look at soybeans. So here's that position here. So we've got a max profit of 918 uh, and, and we're out of the June position and just have the July soybean iron condor on. So on the, tr on the soybean trade overall, remember we've been in this thing for quite some time because uh, it had that huge move against us out of the gate and we've just been kind of managing managing that position since then. If we look at the chart, you know, going all the way back here, we had some pretty massive moves in, in soybeans. So just been continuing to manage that. Uh, we're actually break even on the trade at this point after all adjustments and rolls. And so uh, after this piece here, assuming it stays in a nice range for us, we will book this and potentially be out. Um, you know, we may continue to, to re-enter and, and keep a soybeans position on. It's a great uncorrelated asset to some of the other stocks and bonds and, and, and gold and oil and other assets. So I like having at least one of these grain positions on, but uh, we're getting to the point of profits in soybeans now. So uh, look forward to that. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in FXI. Okay, so we added a, another short strangle in FXI in the June cycle, and, and then we still have our adjusted strangle back in May. So if we look at FXI, here's our May position. So this is a, a position that we had uh, managed. Could use some upside movement in price to benefit that. Uh, we, in May, we've got 28 days. So you know, we'll look to potentially roll that once we get down to about 21 days to expiration is where we like to start looking to roll. So for now, we'll just hold that. Uh, but we, what we did do is add another piece of this out in June, centered around current price to collect more credit, extend that duration. Uh, so we added that. So we've got both of those pieces on in FXI. And lastly, we, uh, we bought back, I already mentioned, we bought back our June iron condor in soybeans, booked a profit over 45% of max on that piece of the trade. So nice, nice trade there. All right, so let's go over the other positions that we, that we have in our portfolio. One is CL, uh, oil. Uh, got a nice little profit in oil, uh, looking for about 40 to 50% of max profit. So if we get a little bit more down move, and some more contraction in implied volatility. Uh, potentially could book that next week. Let's take a look at the charts. Um, you know, so, we, so we've got this little bit of contraction in IV. So if we get a little bit more contraction and a little bit more down movement in price, should be able to book that winner. If not, we will continue to manage as needed. 
I already went over ES, natty gas. So natural gas, we've got this iron condor. Nice and centered, looking for a little bit more profit in that one. So we'll continue to watch that. I uh, already went over notes, soybeans, and wheat. Apple, big down day in Apple, down over 4%. And uh, you know this price had actually gone out of our range and has come all the way back. If we take a look at the charts here, you know, two massive down days in a row uh, based on some reports on from Apple. Oops, let's go back to the chart. So remember, we put this on to keep short delta in our portfolio. So now it's come back into range, got a little bit of profit, looking for some more downside. This is in May, it's got 28 days, so we'll just continue to hold that. DIA, I already went over DIA. EEM, I went over that, FXI. GLD, so we've got an iron condor in GLD, looking for a little bit of upside movement, as well as some more contraction in implied volatility in GLD. You can see we're starting to get some contraction in IV, um, and if it, if it declines further, then that's gonna benefit our, our position there. IWM, the Russell ETF, I got an iron condor in here, could use a little bit of downside movement and we could book a, a winner there early next week if that happens. I already mentioned Microsoft, NVIDIA, the Qs. So the Qs, we still have these short call verticals. So price was up here, it came down nicely the last couple of days here. So back into our range. Again, just holding, these were these were previously part of an iron condor and we just kept the, the short call vertical side on to keep some of that short delta in our portfolio. So looking for some downside to benefit that. I mentioned Starbucks, uh, Tesla, uh, another another short delta position here. So just looking for some more downside to benefit our, our Tesla position. And then same thing with XLK as well. Uh, just have this in here for some short delta in the portfolio. So portfolio set up really nice. And we've got nice diversity, oil, S&Ps, nat gas, notes, soybeans, wheat, some individual stocks, the Dow, Emerging markets, China, uh, Chinese large cap, gold, uh, so a, few, you know, a few earnings plays. So I, I really like where we're positioned here. Let's go to the monitor tab and take a look at how our portfolio is structured based on Delta. So if we take a look here, um, you'll see that our Delta, if we go to the Delta column, we've got in May, we've got negative 190. And then in uh, June, we've got negative 74, and then on our earnings plays, it's pretty flat. So, uh, so we've got about 265 negative uh, or 265 short delta, and we like to, what we like to do is we like to compare that to our theta. So we've got about 137 uh, theta. So the ratio is a little over one to one, almost almost two to one, and so. Uh, we're in a good shape there. I don't necessarily count the theta of the earnings plays, although if you wanted to take that into consideration, that would cancel out the theta here. But we're a we're in we're in a very uh, short period of time for those plays, as well as we've got the uh, potential expansion in implied volatility to offset that theta decay. So I really just look at the delta ratio compared to the theta that we have on our core income strategies, uh, not, not really taking into account the, uh, the earnings plays. So got a great mix here. Uh, hopefully some more profits coming in next week. We've had a great couple weeks. Our, our overall P&L just continues to climb, just booking winners, putting new trades on, making necessary adjustments. Uh, hopefully you guys are starting to get how we trade for you, for you newer people. Just keep on, keep on learning, keep on understanding how we do this. We manage each trade individually, but we also look at it from a portfolio perspective, from a theta, which is kind of our daily theta decay of the, of the options, and then keeping some short delta uh, to, to uh, protect from that downside velocity that we can see from time to time, especially that we saw in, in February and March, or excuse me, February and then early April in the market. So hope that's all helpful. Everybody have a great weekend and we will talk to you next week.